As you pull the covers around your head, you try to block out the faint clawing noise, but you can't. You shut your eyes and the noise gets louder and louder. Scratch, scratch. You look over at the wall and you realize someone had unplugged the nightlight, the one thing that keeps the monster at bay. Monsters might be silly, but nightlights are nifty little devices that only turn on when the lights in your room go out. So, how do they work? Most nightlights have a light sensor on the outside. This sensor is able to measure the amount of light that falls on it. Once the light level in the room gets dim enough, the nightlight turns on its own bulb, providing you with a small amount of illumination. We can use the micro bit to detect the amount of light around us, but here's the trick. The micro bit does not have a light sensor. You can search the entire micro bit, front and back. You won't find a dedicated light sensor. We're actually using the light emitting diodes, or LEDs, to detect light. Wait, I thought you said that LEDs created light. I did, but LEDs can also be used in reverse, just very poorly. If you shine a light on an LED, it will produce a very small amount of current, and we can use that to crudely measure, say, how bright a room is. Let's talk about how that works. A conductor is a material that allows the flow of electricity through it, like this metal nail. An insulator does not allow electricity to flow through it, such as this plastic pen cap. There's a third type of material known as a semiconductor. Semiconductors are not quite conductors and they're not quite insulators. They only conduct electricity under special circumstances. If you zoom all the way in on an LED, you'll see the part that emits light is made up of two different types of semiconductor material. One side of the LED is made up of P-type semiconductor material. This side allows positive charges to move around more freely than negative charges. The other side is made up of N-type semiconductor material. N-type material allows negative charges to move around more freely. When N-type and P-type materials are joined together, some of the negative and positive charges meet in the middle and cancel. This is known as a depletion region. It is difficult for electricity to move through this depletion region, so it acts as a type of insulator. What we have here is two conducting materials, the N-type and the P-type and they're separated by an insulator. We've seen this before. In our accelerometer demo, we showed that two parallel plates separated by air, an insulator, acts as a capacitor. And that's exactly what we have here, a very tiny capacitor. The interesting part is that if we shine light onto the LED, the depletion region becomes slightly larger, taking over parts of the P and N type materials. If we shine less light, the depletion region decreases in size. And guess what? We can measure that. I've connected this capacitance meter to an LED. If I shine light on the LED, the capacitance value decreases. If I remove the light and make it darker, the capacitance value increases. This is very similar to how the temperature sensor works, which we explore in another video. However, we use heat instead of light for the temperature sensor. In the micro bit, Whenever we ask it to measure the light level, it essentially measures the capacitance across a number of LEDs on the front of the board. These values are averaged together and gives you a number between 0 and 255 in make code, where 0 is darkness and 255 is bright light. In make code, create a new variable named reading and put a set reading to block in forever. In input, drag light level to your variable block replacing the default zero. Each time through our forever loop, the micro bit will take a reading of the light level and save it to the reading variable. Under LED, drag a plot bar graph block underneath our set reading to block. Grab a reading variable and replace the zero in the bar graph block. Change the up to number to 255. Now, the micro bit will light up more LEDs if there is more ambient light. You can try this in the simulator. Move the light slider to watch the LEDs change. Download and copy this program to your micro bit. As you shine light on the front of your micro bit, you should see the LEDs light up. 
When you remove the light, the LED bar graph will diminish. Being able to sense light levels means you can do all sorts of fun things with your micro bit. Even if you don't make something to ward off monsters, maybe you can make something a little more lighthearted.